Good morning, student. I am Dr. Bhupendra Saha, Assistant Professor of Department of Internal Medicine, BP Koirala Institute of Health Sciences. Today, we'll discuss about the interpretation of chest X-ray. For the medicals, it is one of the important investigation to diagnose the respiratory disease as well as the some certain cardiac diseases. For the MBBS student, we have to know something about the chest X-ray. That's why I'm here to teach you something about the chest X-ray. In this presentation, we'll learn about the chest X-ray and the flow of the talk will be, we'll discuss about the different technicalities of the chest X-ray. What are the technical aspects of the chest X-ray that we should know before interpreting it? We'll discuss about the normal findings in the chest X-ray. We'll also discuss how to comment upon the chest X-ray. And we'll also discuss the chest X-rays in common respiratory diseases. Okay? So how the chest x-rays are taken? You can look at the picture. In the, so we take for the chest x-ray, this is the typically for the posterior anterior view, x-rays beam are thrown from this side and this distance is, will be near about six feet distance. Okay, from here the chest beam will be thrown. Patient, should take the deep inspiration and hold it for a while. Their hands should be at the OS region and they should hyper abduct their scapula so that scapula do not hinder the X-ray beam. And their neck should be hyper extended and they should keep their chin over the X-ray cassette. That's why the heart of your patient is near to the XA cassette. That is what you need to understand. This is how we take the typical posterior anterior view of the chest X-ray. Okay. So how to comment upon the chest X-ray? Before commenting upon the chest X-ray, you should know the identification of the patient and better if you know the symptoms of the patient as well. If, if you do not know the symptoms, then you will be confused where to look at. So after knowing the symptoms and identification of the patient, when it was taken, you should know. You should also comment upon the different technicalities that we are going to discuss in today's session. Then we have to look out for the artifacts, especially for the tubes or pipes and the NG nasogastric tubes, then the different chest electrodes, buttons like that. We have to always look at for these things. And the formula is AVC, we just check for the airway that is trachea and the bronchus. You check for the breathing that is for the lungs and the pleural cavity. You also check for the cardio mediastinum, that's for the heart and the mediastinum. And you have to check for the disabilities, especially for the trauma, like especially for the ribs and the bones and other things that we'll discuss. Okay, so uh, this is the normal chest x-ray. So I'll try to uh, show you some of the structure that we see in the normal chest x-ray. So because I have to maintain the privacy of my patient, that's why I didn't show the name and the date of the date of this chest x-ray. Ideally, uh, there's a name like this is the chest x-ray of Mr. X, 76 year old gentleman, taken on this date like that. Okay, you, you have to look at here. So there is a, a particular name. 
So this is uh, the trachea. You can see some radio descent space here. This is the trachea, okay? And if you tra like tra trace out the trachea, you can see the branch over here. This is the right bronchus, okay? And if you go, this side, this is the left bronchus. This is the trachea, okay? You can see the, also the like vertebra here. This is the vertebra. You can see the vertebra. And you can see the disc space in between the two vertebra. This is the disc space, okay? You can show. Yeah, you, you can see the vertebra, you can see the track here. So what is this? This is the clavicle. This is a clavicular and, it, and this is the clavicular head. This is clavicle and this is the clavicular head. Similarly, this is also the clavicle and this is also the clavicular head. Okay. This middle one is the lungs. Okay. Lungs, lungs. And this one is the uh, costophrenic angle. This is costophrenic angle. This is cardiophrenic angle. Costophrenic angle, okay, and this is your diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm, okay. So, and this this middle one is the heart, okay. This one is the heart. This one is the heart. This one is the heart. So this is heart. This is diaphragm. This is costophrenic. So this is cardiophrenic angle, okay. This is trachea. This is vertebra. This is dicks. This is clavicle. Uh, and these are these are the ribs. These are the ribs. These are the posterior ribs. And if you, if you want to look at the anterior ribs, this one is the anterior ribs, like this one. This one is this one is anterior ribs. Okay, you can see the faint structure over here. These are the anterior ribs, anterior ribs and posterior ribs. Uh, this one is the tri scapula. Scapula is here. Scapula is here. Okay, this one is the scapula. Scapula. Okay, this one is the scapula. Uh, so you, you can see this uh, trachea, this is the adolescent area, then you can see the bronchus, you can see the vertebra, you can see the intervertebral ticks, you can see the clavicle, you can see the scapula here, you can see the heart, saddles, that is uh, cardiac sillout, cardiac sillout, you can see the diaphragm, you can see the uh, costophrenic angles, and below the left diaphragm, you can see the some adolescent area, this is the fundus of the stomach. Uh, where there is a like normally there is a gas. So these are the uh, structure that you need to identify uh, while interpreting the CS X ray. So, <clears throat> so after knowing the identification of the patient or and the symptoms of the patient, you have to look at the technicalities, whether this CS X ray is technically appropriate or not. So the, for the technicalities, you have to look uh, first of all the positioning. The positioning, there are different positioning, like anterior posterior view or posterior anterior view. It depends upon from which side the X-ray beam, beam comes. And there are there is also called lateral view, there are also called the low rotic view. There are so many types of the views, but the in the clinics, uh, most of the time we take the posterior anterior view. Only in the case of the children, only in the case of the uh, like very sick patient who cannot like sit or stand. Only in that scenario, we take the AP view, okay? The most of the time, we take the PA view. So you have to differentiate whether this is the PA view or uh, AP view. So for that, this is a PA view or this is the AP view. For that, uh, as, uh, for MBBS student, uh, just you look at the position of the clavicle, uh, first of all, okay? The position of the clavicle is in the PA view, it is relatively oblique, it is angular, in angular. Whereas in the AP view, it is the it is horizontal horizontal view. Okay, it's horizontal. So this is one of the uh, differentiating feature between the PA and the AP view. Second structure that you can look for is the scapula. In the PA view, scapula lies outside the long field, outside the long field. Okay, outside the long field, because we do like the hyperextension of the scapula in the PA view. Whereas in the AP view. Uh, we look at the scapula lies, scapula lies like within the long view. So one is the clavicle, another one is the scapula. Third one is the heart shadow is, is, is like usually like is smaller in case of PA view, where it, is, it seems larger in case of the AP view. So it's very difficult to comment upon the cardiac shadow if someone takes the AP film. Okay. So three structure you need to see. One is the clavicle, it is whether it is angular or horizontal. So the second one is the scapula, whether it falls within the long field or away from the long field. And third one is the cardiac sillout. Uh, these are the ways how, to, how you can differentiate the uh, PA versus uh, AP view, okay? 
So second is rotation check, whether because you have to if you erect, if you do like this or if you do like this, then uh, there can be the problem in interpretation of the chest X-ray. So you have to check the rotation, but how you can check the rotation? For the rotation check, you have to know the spinous process. So if you look carefully at the vertebra, you'll see this type of spinous process, okay, spinous process at the level of the T4 vertebra. So for the spinous process, you have to measure the distance between the clavicular head of the both sides of the uh, clavicles, like this one is the, for the right side, this one is the left side. You have to measure this distance, this distance and this distance. This should be equal. If this is equal, then it is like, it is, there is no rotation, it's, okay? If it's unequal, then you can say there is rotation and it's very difficult to interpret such X-ray. So for the rotation, just check the distance between the spinous process of the T4 vertebra from the clavicular head of the clavicle of the both sides. So in the second X-ray, so if you, this is the this is spinal pro process, uh, this is the distance between the clavicle and, and it, the clavicle. Okay, this is how you can check. So if it is a rotated film, and it's better you do not comment upon the uh, this X-ray. Okay. Then third thing you, have, you need to check uh, is whether this X-ray is taken in the inspiratory or expiratory phase. Normally we take the uh, chest X-ray in the uh, full inspiratory phase. Uh, for that you need to count the ribs. For the posterior ribs, for, for the posterior ribs, like this one is the one first posterior rib, this one is, uh, is the second posterior ribs, this one is the third, and this one is the fourth, and then fifth, then sixth, then seventh, and then eighth, then ninth, okay. So these are, these are the posterior ribs. For the anterior ribs, this one is the anterior one first, this one is second, this one is third, this one is fourth, this one is fifth, and this one is sixth. So these are the posterior ribs. For the full inspiration, the, your diaphragm should be at the level of the 10th rib, 10th rib. This diaphragm should be at the level, level of 10th rib. So if you count the anterior rib, one, two, three, four, five, six, you should be in between the five, fifth to sixth rib, more in the sixth rib. So if your diaphragm is at the level of anterior sixth rib, then it is taken in inspiration. If it, it is not like that, like in this X-ray, this is first anterior rib, this is first second anterior rib, this is third anterior rib, this is fourth rib only. So this is not, this film is not taken in full inspiratory phase. This is taken in the expiratory phase. So if you take the film in expiratory phase, then you, you see the more opacity and it's very difficult to comment upon. That's why second technical aspect you need to see is whether in what phase of the respiration X-ray are taken, okay? Fourth thing that you need to see is that exposure. Exposure, like if you if you give the uh, this uh, like low amount of the current, then you see the opacity here. If you give the high amount of current, you see the radio resonance, abnormal radio resonance here. So that's with the correct exposure. To see to comment upon the correct exposure, how can you say it's the correct exposure? You can see the vertebra, vertebra. Of just behind the cardex, you know, and so if you, if you see that vertebra faintly, faintly, only faintly, then it is the correct exposure. If you, if you can't see the vertebra, you, you can say it is the, it is the underexposed. If you see the vertebra clearly, then you can say it is the overexposed. So if overexposed flip, long field are hyperlucent. In underexposed flip, long field are radioopic. So it should be, it should have the correct exposure. These are the four things that you need to comment upon. So, what <clears throat> like uh, before proceeding further, uh, so what we have discussed, so before commenting upon the chest X-ray, you need to know the identification of the patient. You need to know when the X-rays was taken because like patient may have the multiple X-ray, one X-ray just taken yesterday, one another X-ray just uh, taken one year back. So we want to, we want to see, so when the X-rays were taken. So that's why you need to know. Then we have to see <clears throat> about the views, whether it is AP or PA views. Uh, then we have to check for the rotation, how we can check the rotation we have discussed. We have to check uh, it, whether it is taken in inspirated or expirated phase. We have to also check whether it, is, it has a correct exposure or not. Uh, not. So after knowing these technicalities, uh, we can proceed further. Uh, so just uh, before going ahead, uh, like I, I, I just want to comment upon the diaphragm. We have, we have the right diaphragm and the left diaphragm 
and usually the right diaphragm are above than the left diaphragm by around one to two centimeter. It's because, because of the cardiac uh, structures, like left diaphragm is slightly lower. Okay, so if you, if you see left diaphragm is like higher than the right diaphragm, then you have to think about some pathologies. It's always right diaphragm is higher than the left diaphragm in the normal sex X-ray. Similarly, I, uh, uh, there is hilum, still hilum. You can, these are the hilum, hilar structures, which are made of the uh, different bronchial, bra, uh, like bronchial arteries, pulmonary vessels, and you have right hilar region and the left hilar region. Usually the left hilar region is above than the right hilar region, okay, in the normal chest X-ray. And we have to also know about the zones uh, before commenting upon the chest X-ray. So, uh, we have divided the long field into three zones, that upper zone, middle zone, and the lower zone. And we have to count the anterior ribs, not posterior ribs. Okay? This one, this is the first anterior ribs. This is oblique, okay? This is second, uh, second. This one is third, and this one is the fourth. So, above the uh, level of the second ribs, uh, usually in lower margin of the second ribs, this is the upper margin, above the, above the level of the lower margin of the second ribs. From second rib to fourth rib, it's the middle zone. And, and below the fourth rib, it's the lower zone. So uh, when we are commenting upon the chest axis, we have to uh, give uh, in which uh, zone there is a pathology. Uh, that's why we have to know about the zones. So first, uh, two rib falls in the upper zone. Uh, then second and um, sorry, third and fourth in the middle zone. And below the fourth rib is lower zone. Okay. So uh, after knowing this, uh, then I, uh, as, I, I, as, as we have already discussed, we have to see for the tubes, tubes like um, in this case X-ray. So once you check here, the, you can see the radio opacity. This is not a, not a normal finding. This is the endotracheal tube. So you have to check that. You have to comment upon that. And you can also see uh, this thing up here. This probably this is the electrode, chest electrode. Okay, chest electrodes. Okay, this is the endotracheal tube. Similarly, if you see this type of lines here, this is the probably a CVP lines, okay, CVP lines. Okay, this one is, this one is the CVP lines. Um, similarly, uh, if you see, follow the, I, there is some opacity here. If you follow this two years and you can go here, go, go here, go here, okay. You can see this type of tube. This is the nasogastric tube. So please uh, see for that type of tube. You can also see one, another tube here, okay. This is probably the uh, tube for the oxygen uh, marks. Okay, oxygen marks. So these are the things that you need to see. Now let us look for the, some of the pathologies. So um, as I have already told to you, you have to first comment upon the uh, airway. So in this chest X-ray, uh, uh, so we do not know the name of this person. Okay, uh, identification we do not know. Uh, let us check for the views. The clavicle seems oblique, uh, scapula seems outside the long field. Probably this is the PA view. And positioning, probably this is uh, probably in this here, up to here. Uh, this is okay, uh, centering, well centered. Uh, exposure, this faintly, we see that this is a correct exposure. Uh, okay, so these are the way we have to comment. We do not see any tubes here. And regarding the zones, uh, then ABC, ABC. Airway. So trachea, it is a trachea, trachea seems normal. There is a right bronchus and there is left bronchus, left bronchus. Okay. Trachea. After A, then we have to comment upon the B that is uh, lungs. In the lungs, upper term seems normal. Uh, it seems normal. Uh, but uh, if you see here, here, this, this is structure. Okay. This, there is some uh, problems here. Comparing, comparing to the uh, right, middle, and lower zone, there is opacity here, opacity. So there is a radio op opacity here in the middle and the lower zone. It has uh, the ill-defined margin, and you can see some radiolucent areas over here. These are the ear bronchogram. Uh, so probably, so, so we see the, uh, this, uh, there is an inhomogeneous opacity with ill-defined margin in upper and middle uh, left zone with ear bronchogram in between. So this is a probably the chest. Uh, this is the X-ray of the uh, consolidation. Uh, then we have to cardiac structures, seems normal. Uh, then B is disability. So you do not see any fractures of the ribs and other structure like below the diaphragm. We do not see any gas under diaphragm. 
the right side. So probably this is a chest X-ray of the consolidation. Uh, similarly, there is a history of 25 year old man with a history of cough for 10 days. Uh, okay, seems we do not know. This is a 25 year old gentleman. Mm, clavicles is vertical, scapula outside slightly. So probably this is this is doubtful. The AP view, but probably is the PA view. Okay, PA view, and then okay. So airway seems normal. There is no tubes here. Upper zone seems normal. Middle zone seems normal. Uh, but we see some opacity here in the especially here. We don't see this normal. So there is homogeneous opacity in the uh, right lower zone with blunting of the costophrenic angles. There is blunting of the costophrenic angle because we do not see the costophrenic angle here. So probably this is the chest extra pleural effusion. Pleural effusion. Okay. This is how we need to comment. Uh, similarly, uh, so here after looking at all technology, we can see that some homogeneous, homogeneous opacity here. Okay, homogeneous opacity here. This homogeneous opacity with well-defined margins. Uh, this is how we have to comment upon. Uh, similarly, this is the 32-year-old man, gentleman with the shortness of breath for two days. So after looking at all the technicalities and identifications. Long seems normal, but uh, if you just look at this, is the uh, visceral pleura, and you can see that the bronchovascular marking is bronchovascular markings here. But in this area, this is relatively hyperlucent area because there is no hyperlucent areas here with uh, separation of the two pleural level. So, probably this is a chest axis of pneumothorax. And if you can also look at the uh, tubes here, like it seems it's, 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 it's shifted towards the opposite side. So, this is a chest axis of pneumothorax. Similarly, there is still 55 year old gentleman with still fever for uh, two months, two month duration. So you have to look at all the technicalities and chest x rays, you have to comment upon. Uh, upper zone seems normal, but in the middle and lower zone, in the left, it seems normal. But here you see there's some opacity and radiolucent area over here. Uh, so there is definite air fluid level, there is, you know, there is inhomogeneous opacity. With air fluid level within that opacity, so this uh, this X-ray is uh, probably suggestive of the long abscess. In the long abscess, we see this type of the chest X-ray. Uh, similarly, there is still a 65-year-old gentleman with shortness of breath for two years. So clavicle seems uh, horizontal, and even the scapula which lies within the field. So probably this is the AP view. And but uh, what we see, there is an increase in radio efficiency area in both the flames mm, and the radio efficiency. Uh, it's very difficult to comment upon. But uh, one element here is the diaphragm. There is not tinting of the diaphragm; it's a flattened. So this is the chest actually of the hyperinflated long field. Okay, hyperinflated long field. So the features are the flattening of the diaphragm, hyperlucent long fields. And these are the features of the uh, inflation of the long field, and it's common in emphysematous uh, lung. Okay, so thank you. Uh, so we have discussed so about some of the some of the things about the chest X-ray. So uh, for the MBBS student, I request you to know uh, about the chest X-ray, and before commenting the chest X-ray, you have to. Uh, take the history of the patient briefly. So, what are the complaints of the patient? Like in this patient, the patient has shortness of breath for two years. Then, we definitely, we think about the conditions like COPD. Okay, in this condition, the patient has a fever. Definitely, we have to think about the conditions like the uh, long abscess in this scenario. That's why, that's the, if you know the history, then it's very easy to know. Uh, then, always comment upon the patient identification and the date of the chest exit taken. Always comment upon the technicalities. And then you go, you follow the some rules like you see for the tubes, pipes, and artifacts. Then you check for the airway, lungs, uh, the B means lungs and the pleura. Then you check for the cardiomegastinum and all the like visibility, like ribs and the uh, vertebra, then other things like the gas under diaphragms, like this. So you make a habit to see the chest x ray like this. Then definitely, um, there is lesser chance you will. You, you, 
he's diagnosed the case there are lots of things that has been that 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 is uh, remain to discuss about the chest x ray that is out of the discussion for the ambivalence student because there are if we did discuss are so many chest x like of the fibrosis or the cavitation that the milleri motling or hydrolink deliveries we'll discuss in the upcoming class uh, so uh, uh, till the other class please enjoy the learning and if you have any questions then you can write in the comment sections okay thank you thank you so much for your kind attention